Hi everyone. Thanks for being my sojourners in my travel through the study of miracles in the scriptures. Dear friends, today we shall row deep into the middle of the sea. Does another wave of doubt pull you under? Does another wave of doubt pull me under? Do our insecurities alter our faith? Dear friends, in Jesus we know we are made for more. Yes, we are made for more. You look around, it's staring back at you. Another wave of doubt. Will it pull you under? You wonder. What if I'm overtaken? What if I never make it? What if no one is there? Will you hear my prayer? When you take that first step into the unknown, you know that he won't let you go. So what are you waiting for? What do you have to lose? Your insecurities, they try to hold you through. You know you're made for more. So don't be afraid to move. Your faith is all it takes and you can walk on the water too. So get out and let your fear fall to the ground. No time to waste, don't wait and don't turn around and miss out. Everything you are made for, I know you are not sure. So you play it safe and try to run away. If you take that first step into the unknown, he won't let you go. So what are you waiting for? What do you have to lose? Your insecurities, they try to hold you to. You know you are made for more. So don't be afraid to move. Your faith is all it takes and you can walk on the water too. Step up. Even when it's storming, step on. Even when your heart is telling you, telling you, you can see where you are going. Step on. You don't have to be afraid. So what are you waiting for? What do you have to do? What are you waiting for? What do you have to lose? Your insecurities, they try to hold you back. You know you are made for more. So don't be afraid to move. Your faith is all it takes and you can walk on the water too. Step out when your hope is stolen. Step out when you can't see where you are going. You don't have to be afraid. Step out even when it is storming in the middle of the sea. Step out even when you are broken. Step out even when your heart is telling you it is telling you to give up. Step out. Step out of the turbulence of doubt. Dear friends, how blessed we shall be when we know that we are made for more. Let not our insecurities alter you. Let not our my 
I will not let my insecurities alter me, alter my faith. What a blessed time it was when Jesus was walking with his disciples. When Jesus was walking with the apostles, today, as we are going to row deep into the middle of the sea, let's go back to the scene of the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus Christ walked with his disciples, with his apostles. Jesus sent his disciples by ship back to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he remained behind alone to pray. Night fell, the sea arose, the ship became caught in a wild storm. After rowing against the wind for most of the night, the disciples saw Jesus walking on water. Yes, they were frightened, thinking that they were seeing a spirit. But when Jesus told them not to be afraid, they were assured. They rest assured. After Jesus entered the ship, the wind ceased and they all turned down to the land. Here in this miracle, Jesus had a pivotal role in the formation of Christian ecumenical creeds. In this pericope, the relationship between Jesus and his apostles was brilliantly picturized. This miracle, deliberately, it is designed by Jesus Christ to instruct his apostles and to increase their faith. Do miracles happen today? That's the question of many people who believe in their work. But when does my work become a success? It is by faith in the Lord, our personal Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, miracles do happen. A miraculous drought of fish was caught by the disciples and it was picturesquely described in the canonical gospels. The apostles are fishing unsuccessfully in the Sea of Galilee. Jesus tells them to try one more cast of the net. Do you believe it? Do you obey him? Jesus tells them to try one more cast of the net. They are rewarded with a great catch. This we see, we read in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 47 to 50. Similarly, Jesus was preaching near the lake of Gennesaret, near the Sea of Galilee. Jesus boarded the boat of Simon Peter. He said, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. It's a beautiful, awesome dialogue between Peter and Jesus Christ. Peter says, Master, we have worked hard all the night and haven't got anything but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Because you say so, I will let down the nets. They caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Then Peter recognizes Jesus Christ and says, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Jesus replies, Don't be afraid. 
From now on, you will catch men. Peter, James and John left everything and followed Jesus. That is how they became uh, the apostles of Christ. Next time, second time, Jesus appears to the disciples after his resurrection in life. Jesus appears alive in front of the disciples in the book of John, chapter 21, 1 to 14, if we study. Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, sons of Zebedee are all there. And again, we see a wonderful, amazing conversation between Jesus Christ and the disciples. The disciples speak among themselves. Simon says, I'm going out to fish. Now, Jesus is not with me. He is not walking with us. He is no more with us. So I am going, to, going out to fish to catch the fish. Other disciples say, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat. Again, the night is a scene of dark night and deep in the middle of the sea, dark waters in the middle of the sea. That night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. Disciples could not recognize Jesus. Jesus asks them, friends, haven't you any fish? And they replied, no. They gave up. They were not able to catch the fish. And Jesus guides them. Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Throw your net on the right side. This is again the instruction given by Jesus to the disciples. Did they oblige? Did, are they obedient enough to throw their net one more time? Yes, they did. When they did, they were unable to hold the net because of the large number of fish. One disciple whom Jesus loved says to Peter, It is our Lord. He is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then Jesus admonishes them, tells them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. They were dragging the net full of almost 153 fish. They dragged the boat full of 153 large fish and came and have brought some fish. Jesus keeps the fish on the fire. Maybe it's a very tasty roasted fish and says, come, let us have breakfast. It's a beautiful, it's a very mouth-watering breakfast of roasted fish which Jesus himself cooked on the fire for the disciples. What does this uh, scene of rowing deep into the middle of the sea and being unsuccessful in catching the fish. And when the Lord boats our fish, uh, boats our boat, the boat of our life, when Jesus boats our boat, we become successful. What does this imply? There are four points here. One is, Jesus, the, our Lord, makes us capable. He makes us capable. He empowers us. He makes us capable of fulfilling the works of faith. We shall fulfill the work of our faith as our Lord makes us capable of fulfilling the works of our faith. Secondly, he gives us strength. He strengthens us. He gives us strength to act 
and to serve with love, with the love that is permeated with his mercy. The love of Christ per permeates into us and fills us with love and mercy towards others and we shall act and serve and we shall be strengthened to act and to serve with a love that permeates with his mercy. As the children of God, this love will help us. Love of Christ in us helps us to radiate. If I am in Christ, I shall radiate joy and the courage of the redeemed. A special joy and a wonderful courage of the redeemed. We shall radiate the joy and the courage of the redeemed. And then finally, you and me, we shall testify the power of grace which we carry in us. We carry the power of grace in us. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that's given us. The love is permeated. It Love of Christ percolates into our system, into our being, and we shall act and we shall serve people in love. So let's look unto our Lord who shall make us capable, who shall strengthen us, that we shall radiate joy and courage and we shall act and serve in love and we shall testify the power of grace in us. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with the gladness. Come before his presence with the singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and the sheep of his pasture. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into the gates with the thanksgiving and into the courts with the praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. This is the truth that which we cannot question in unbelief. This is the truth. Because Jesus says, I am the way, I am the light, I am the truth, I am the life. Who are we? to question, who are we to doubt it? So let's look into God in prayer. Heavenly loving Father, we come to thy feet this time, this moment, in one love, in one accord. Make us capable of fulfilling the works of faith in you. Give us strength to act and serve with a love that is permeated with your mercy. Help us to radiate the joy and the courage of the redeemed. Give us strength to testify the power of grace in us. Be with us and guide us and protect us, all the viewers of this mind. Small mustard seed of my faith. In Jesus' precious name I ask, Amen. Amen. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you so much for being with me. See you next time. Bye-bye.